Welcome back everyone, this is Rajneesh and this section is about setting up the MySQL database. Trust me, this is going to be very fun and pretty exciting because here we'll be setting up the database from scratch. Okay, uh, let's not take enough time and get started with it. Let's first finalize how your database should really look like. So what are we going to make? We already have, assumption is we already have a website and we just want to build a build a database of students okay and this database is let's say for for academy itself for our uh, tg academy the uh, academy itself where we are building up the uh, database for database for student information so we want to create a table for students in that case and the student would be having their first name last name and as simple as maybe their interest and the location of it right so here is how it's, it's gonna look students would be the table okay understand this a database uh, the, in the mysql there could be multiple databases okay and each databases can have multiple tables right so if you select database like um, uh, my website okay so this could be a database and in the database my website or my web you can have database for students database for code i mean sorry table for students uh, table for uh, login information of students table for course information table for uh, maybe uh, product catalog for many stuff you can have multiple tables into it for a single database okay so in our case this is what we have okay so we'll be building the entire database from the scratch and i'll show you how exactly it's going to work we'll be making use of mysql in this case which is open source and free of cost as well uh, let's open our mysql server so this is the server that we have okay let me okay Okay, what we can do is we can keep this. Okay, I don't want to see the presentation in much. So I'll keep the database on the left and this on the right. Okay, so what do you see on the right is my MySQL server. So the first thing MySQL server is basically it's running on the Ubuntu. What you can do is you can just have Ubuntu server download from Ubuntu.com or maybe any other platform, get it downloaded, or maybe you can have uh, the OWA file or virtual machine file for virtual box directly. You can turn it up. And the first thing that you can do is do the APT up update and APT upgrade, right? So this is what you can do once you are, once you are with the, yeah. So this is what you have to start with once you have your system, your Linux, your Ubuntu machine ready. After that, what do you need to do is you have to install the MySQL. The command is MySQL server, all right? So the moment you do that, it will install the MySQL server because in my case, the server is already installed, so I won't be having a trouble with this, okay? So now once it is done, then you have to start the system. So for that, you have to systemctl start MySQL server and oh sorry the mysql sir okay and then you can check the status of it it's running right so i just started the mysql server and uh, it seems to be running absolutely fine now in this case what are we going to do is we are going to create a database and for that we have to configure uh, our entire uh, MySQL server. So we'll be going into the MySQL instance. We are currently into the Ubuntu. Okay. And you can even verify the version of it. This is what it is. It is a Linux machine, Ubuntu. That's the version. That's the architecture as well. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, let me maximize it even more better. Okay. This looks nice. Okay. Let's get started. So in order to log into the MySQL, you have to type MySQL login as a root and then get into it. You have to specify your password. Wonderful. You see MySQL, that's that indicates that you are into database. Okay. Now to verify if you have any database into it, 
as I told you in the MySQL there can be multiple databases all right and each databases have the multiple tables right so let's check it out if we have any databases into the system right databases you have to end up with the code that's what it is right if you do that directly straight away it will fail and then you have to exit in that case right so always make use of something like this to sorry always use something like this uh, wherein you end up with the code so that it won't create a problem for you okay um, now this is the way you get to see about entire database okay and um, when exactly when you get to see all the databases and you want to create a new one what you can do is uh, you can create a new database and for that you need to make use of a command create database create a database let's say I mentioned mydb for example and then we specify this the database has been created so verify what you can do is show databases and then simple and then you get to see right your mydb has been created okay you see the second database mydb it has been created now so the database is created now what's next as i told you uh if you really want to create the individual entries you have to it's a hierarchy right so you have to come down from the database to the table to the individual entries so currently we are in the mysql so we have to get into the database so in order to go there you can make a command use use mydb and then semicolon you are into the database now database has been changed right so currently you are into this table so you are into the mydb and you can verify if you have any tables into it there's no table so there is no table into this database mydb of course it is not it won't be because we have just created the database so we have to start creating a tables now so what's the name of our table it has to be students right so let's create one so the command would be create and then the name you have to specify the name of the table that would be students and then you can specify what are the entries you need the first name for sure right so we have to specify first name and then you have to define what would be the maximum number of character that you are looking for so 100 and then uh, you can have the next column of the table with the same style last name and then uh, I'm sorry that again var char var character that's where you define 100 and again the next one is the interest right so interest and then again var care characters and that's gonna be again 100 well then we have location let's keep it small and var char 100 and with semicolon and here we go so the table has been created we are still on the mydb so let's check it out if the table is really created has been created or not lovely so you could see the table has been created and their columns has been built up as well but there's no entry for sure there's no entry into the uh, into this into this table and uh, that you can even get to know when you type like select any entry from table so that's what if you look at it that's what we have used in the introduction as well so the from indicates from the which table so let's say i want to see anything from students right so i don't see anything because there is no row defined there's no oh sorry i think we forgot to add id into it right we forgot to add the id number and uh, what we can do is basically you we can still go ahead with this or you can make you you can probably drop it as well so let's say it would be even good for you to understand how to drop a table as well and start a new one as well so let's say if you want to drop this table and create the new one with defining the id and everything so let's say what you can do is drop table students and then here we go so this table has now been deleted how you can verify that you see there's no table right but let's do it a quick job here we can do the up arrow and that's gonna solve a lot of problem solve the problem basically so we can go here again type id 
back in. Hungry. Oh, sorry. Wonderful, right? So this is now completed. Oh. Uh, I think I missed some. Yeah, so this has been completed now. And the moment we hit enter, this should be done. Right, so our table is now ready. We can again verify with the same style, show tables. And here we see, the table has been built. Now you can still, the same way you can verify if there is any entry into the table, same command, select. As I told you, you won't be able to see anything because there's no entry as such, right? We have just modified, we have just modified the column. We have just added a column by removing the earlier Right, so there is nothing. How to add individual entries? How to add basically individual rows into it? So for that, what you can do is you can go to insert, being into the same database. You don't have to change database or you don't have to go even further into a table as well. You just have to be stuck, stick with one database at a time. We are currently into MyDB. We have created um, a table with five column, right? So five column. We initially created four that we have dropped and now we have built up a gate. So now let's insert the information into it. Insert uh, into name of the database, students, and that's where we define values, right? So we have to specify the values. Now, remember this, you should always remember how many columns you have. So accordingly, whenever you add values, you should be sure about it. So let's say now we, we know there are five uh, columns right so we'll have to add five entries accordingly so one and then so we have John right and then uh, John. then his interest is hacking I love John for sure <laughs> and then we have location that's Dallas and the moment you hit enter after semicolon it should be inserted right so now we have added just one row do you want to see what's inside you can still make use of select anything from this table and you would see this you got the idea now how could we add more so inside number two then you can specify alas and his month. Sorry. Oh, his interest is into cybersecurity. For some reason. Wonderful. We have added one more entry. Let's add the third one. I'm adding ample number of information so that it would make sense for you looks pretty comfortable hacking and Chicago there are many ways in fact there are many tools available but I want to show you the most native and most simplest the first applicable method Charlie oh sorry Charlie 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 yeah Charlie and the chase Charlie chase Oh, lovely name. Hacking. San Jose. All right, so he's from San Jose. I just uh, I've just done it. Let's verify the information in the table. And you know this, right? If you want to see the information into the table, you can again do the. I want to see all or any information from this table, right? From this table, students. Lovely. Isn't it really cool? right so what you can actually do is you can be even more specific about any information right so you can even specify uh, select star from students where where ID is one right where ID is one right so that's how you select the individual row where ID is two where ID is four you see what I'm really referring to? We have seen 
our organization where we have selected the username and password combination that's where we used to define where id is to and this and this that right so we can even be specific about okay where where first name is charlie and last name is chase so that entire row will be selected i hope you got the idea pretty well and this is something which we this is the very fundamental it would be difficult to get the this idea so straightforward uh, in any of the hacking tutorial but i this i feel this is very very important for you to understand the sql injection and making use of sql uh, during this penetration testing is really really important all right so i hope you got the idea uh, we'll catch you in the next session then thank you